in this exercise, we will learn about how to make use of local storage that our browser supports in order to store small amounts of data within our app and then be able to retrieve them in the future. So as you have learned about local storage, we can use the key value pairs for storing local storage. In this exercise, we will introduce a service that enables us to store and retrieve data from our local storage. And then we can then inject that service into our controllers wherever necessary in order to make use of local storage. So let's go uh, introducing local storage step by step in this exercise. To introduce local storage for this exercise, let's go to services.js file and then add a new factory and name it local storage. Um, let me introduce the code and then explain to you what this code does. So first, let's introduce a new factory named local storage and which depends upon window which is going to be inserted into our application. This window again is our browser window which hosts this local storage. So we are using the local storage support by our browser here. So um, once you have the factory in place, then we can in inject this local storage factory wherever we need to make use of the local storage. So in there, let me introduce a few um, methods that we can then make use of within our controllers whenever we need to store and retrieve data from local storage. So let's add four methods here. We'll add a method to store in a, uh, a single value. We will also add a method to store a JavaScript object converted into a JSON string to be stored in the um, uh, storage and then be able to retrieve the JSON string from the storage and then convert it back into a JavaScript object before being supplied back to the controller or wherever we access this um, information. So let's add these four functions to this factory and then we'll look at the code. So here this factory is returning this JavaScript object which contains four functions. I have a store function which takes a key and a value and then it stores that into the local storage as you can see in this uh, example here. So um, uh, depending upon the key that we supply and the value that we supply, it stores that value into the um, uh, corresponding, with the corresponding key there. The get function returns that value. When you call the get function, you can also supply a default value in case you are not able to find that in the local storage, then a default value will be returned. So this way we ensure that our code does not um, suffer from problems. So we can supply back a default value. Similarly, if you want to store a JavaScript object, then we call the store object function, which takes a key and a value, which the value is the JavaScript object that we are supplying. So in this case, it'll be stored um, uh, by converting that object into a JSON string by using the JSON stringify um, method there and then store it into the local storage because the local storage only supports strings. So that's the reason why we need to use this approach. Now, when you need to retrieve that object, then you supply a key and a default value. So in that case, you do a JSON parse and then retrieve this default value, you retrieve the value if it exists. Otherwise, you will return the default value. So these four methods enable us to support the use of local storage within our application. Now, we can then take this factory and then inject it wherever we need. In the example, you will see me injecting this factory into my app control, and then we will use this um, local storage to store, store the username and password that we type into the login form. So that when the user enters this form, subsequently they don't need to keep typing in this information every single time. Instead, if it already exists in the local storage, that information is retrieved and then already the form will be filled up by default. 
The user also has an opportunity to change that value if required. When the user clicks on the login button, the values, in case the user changes the values, the values will be stored back into the local storage. So the user is given the option of updating this information, uh, the username and password if required. In this exercise, I am storing both the username and password as uh, unencrypted strings. But if you were to implement this as part of a real application, I would suggest that you encrypt this value before you store in your local storage so that nobody else can decrypt the value. But the, uh, the encryption and decryption is beyond the scope of this course. So that, that's why I'm not talking about that specifically in this particular exercise. Now switching to controllers.js, in the app control, I'm going to inject the local storage in there and then make use of that in order to store the username and password, my login data. So let me first inject the local storage into the controller. So here I have uh, added the local storage to the controller. Now, as we go down, you see that the login information is stored inside this object called as the login data. Now, it, I started out by initializing login data to an empty JavaScript object. Instead, what I'm going to do is I will go and look for that information in my local storage. If it exists, then I will load in the login data from there. If not, then by default, I will initialize it to an empty JavaScript object. So to do that, I'm going to replace this statement with an appropriate statement calling on the local storage. So let me do that and then explain the code to you. Now you can see that uh, I am making use of the get object method that is supported by my local storage factory. So uh, I call the get object and then I am using the, the key as user info here. And then I am supplying the default value as an empty JSON object. Because in my code, I expect the default value to be a JSON object because that I'm going to parse and then send it back to my um, uh, application wherever it is called. So that's the reason why I say local storage, get object, user info, and empty. So if, me, if, if, this doesn't exist, then it will return an empty JavaScript object. If it exists, then it will return the value obtained from local storage. So this way, when my application starts, the first time when the user types in the login uh, um, information, the username and password, that will be saved to the local database. And then it will be retrieved every time the user reruns the application. And you would see that when you bring up the login uh, window, that information will always be preloaded once you have entered that information once. So this is the part where we retrieve the information from the local storage. Now, you remember that when we handled the login model, we were handling it in the method called do login, which is part of this app control. So let's go to that uh, do login function here you can see that I have the do login function here. So what I'm going to do in the do login function is when the user clicks on the login button, then I'm going to save the username and password because this value comes in as the login data JavaScript object. I'm just going to push that login data JavaScript object into my local storage. So to do that, let me add in the code. So here, you can see that I am calling the store object function of the local storage factory. And then I am passing in the value as user info as the key, and then the login data JavaScript object as the value. So this information will be saved into my local storage. If I quit my app and then later on restart the app, that information would be retrieved by the get object um, statement that you saw earlier, and then the model will be pre-filled 
with the data. So that way I can persist the login information in my application and then automatically fill in that information when the user starts my application. Let's go and see the resulting app and understand how the local storage is being leveraged in the resulting application. Switching to my app, I have also brought up the developer's console. In this case, I am using uh, a um, Safari browser to show that. And down below, when I open the developer's console, I can see the storage information. Depending on the browser that you use, you can always view the local storage. It's either as storage or in the resources if you're using Chrome or any other browser. In this uh, example, um, now that we have brought this up, right now the local storage is empty. Uh, let me now click on the login um, option in my um, menu here, sidebar menu here. So the login form is brought up in the login, login modal. Let me type in a username and password. So let me just type in randomly ABC and then I'll just type in a password. When I click the login, what happens is that this will result in a creation of the uh, object which will be stored into my local storage. So let me click on the login button here. And then if you have your uh, developer console open, you can immediately see in the storage, if you select local storage, you can see that for the key user info, the corresponding value being stored. So this is a JavaScript object that has been stored as a JSON string inside my local storage. So now this information is filled in. Anytime I bring up the login form, this information will be pre-filled into the login form. This way we can persist the data in our local storage. To convince you that the data will actually be stored locally and then you can always, when you restart your application, the data will still be available. Let me close the application completely and then we'll restart the application. So right in front of you, I am closing that window and the app is gone. I will restart the application. So I will go to my terminal window and then restart my Ionic Surf. Then we'll come back and then again examine the application here. I have now restarted my application. And when I go and click on the local storage, you can still see that the user info is persisting in my local storage. Now, when I click on my login um, form by invoking the login model, you can now see that the information is already pre-filled in here because in our controller, we are reading in this information by using the get object function and then uh, putting it into the login data JavaScript object inside our controller. So that's the reason why this information is being shown in this form here. So this is a way that you can persist the data within your application using local storage. This completes this exercise. In this exercise, we have learned how to make use of local storage to persist our data.